The example we just looked at had an optimal solution, but it doesn't always happen that way. We will look at some special cases where solver is not able to find the optimal solution. First, for example, suppose the sales department at this company says you need to make at least 100 tons of fuel additive because the company's major customer placed an order for 100 tons. Well, is this possible? Maybe if we devote all our resources, all the materials, to making just fuel additive? Well, let's try. Maybe make 100 tons of fuel additive and no solvent base. Is this possible with the available materials? Uh, no, I don't think so. Here we are saying material 3, we need to use 60, but we only have 21, for instance. And also we could see that we have some negative slack values. So I'll just undo this part. Let's see how the solver will react when you give it this additional constraint. That is, add a constraint. F is greater than or equal to 100. I'll just directly add this into solver. So go to solver and add. And here I refer to the cell that has F value greater than or equal to, and then enter 100 here for the right hand side. Say OK and solve. Oh, yes. So we could see it says solver could not find a feasible solution. Now, remember the feasible solution means a solution that satisfies all the constraints at the same time. Because we had this additional constraint, f is greater than or equal to 100, which conflicted with the other constraints from the materials, there were no solution values for f and s that were able to satisfy all the constraints, including the new one. Now, what do we, now what do we have here and on our spreadsheet? Is this a solution? No, I don't think so. This is just a place where solver gave up trying. So you could just ignore this result. The only time you should take the solver result seriously if it tells you that it was able to find the optimal solution. So I'm going to click on Restore Original Values. Here, the problem is not that the solver is not smart enough to find the solution. It's just that we were unreasonable and, and gave it a problem that was impossible to solve. So we gave it a linear programming problem that, that was infeasible, that is, did not have feasible solution values. In that case, the problem needs to be worked out outside of solver. So it becomes a people problem. So there should be some kind of negotiation. Like maybe the production people could tell the sales people, well, why don't you guys go and tell your customer that we're sorry, but not all the 100 tons could be shipped right away, but we could ship some of them now and ship some later when we get enough materials to make more. There's a second special case to consider. What do you think would happen if we reversed the direction of these constraints. So that is, the constraints will look something like amount of material used is greater than or equal to the amount available. That is, we'll be saying material 1 used must be at least 20 tons, material 2 used must be at least 5 tons, and so forth. Then there's no limit on your resources. That would mean there is no limit to how much of the products you could make. So that kind of problem is called unbounded. So we say a problem is unbounded when there are not enough appropriate constraints to place limits on the values of the decision variables. Let's see how solver reacts when you give it a problem like this. So I will go to so we go to solver. I'm going to delete this new constraint and then change the direction of the existing constraints to greater than or equal to and then say OK and solve. So you can see it tells you the objective cell values do not converge. Uh, so not converging means it's the values are not settling down to some specific number. And that's because there is no limit to how much of the product you could make, which means that there is no limit to how much profit. So the profit is unbounded and is not converging on some level. So again, the numbers we have here on the spreadsheet is not the solution. 
you don't want to draw any conclusion from these numbers. So we're going to say restore to original values. In the word file, you could see I summarized those two special cases. So now you understand when you get one of these messages, what's going on. For the homework problems, I wouldn't be giving you anything weird. So I will be giving you problems that have the optimal solution. So this message is what you should get. And if you get one of these other messages, well, whose fault is it? Not mine, but yours. You must have made an error somewhere, so you need to go back and check. Now we work on summarizing and interpreting the result and also doing some sensitivity analysis by answering these questions. The first question is just a summary question. According to the result, how much of each product should be produced? What is the maximum possible profit? Well, we have answered this question already here, so I'm just going to copy this and put it here. And, well, let's make it bold. Okay, well, second question. Will there be any materials left? So if you do this, any materials left? Well, we could answer that by looking at the slack. There is one ton of material to the left, and we could see it from here. Four tons are being used out of the five tons. And so here we would say, one ton of material, two will be left, uh, but then the others, you could see, but then the other materials are used up. But the other materials will be used up. The third question, if three additional tons of material three becomes available, what will be the effect on the maximum profit? Three additional tons of material three, so available amount is increased by three. The available amount now is 21, so this number now becomes 24, and we want to see the effect of that change. Well, let's think. If you have more resources than before, then usually you're better off. More resources means you could make more of your product with those additional resources, which leads to higher profits. So I would expect the total profit to increase. Now, how do we know how much the total profit will increase? Well, all we have to do is just change the number. All we have to do is change this value from 21 to the new value of 24 and run solver again. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here, change it to 24, then solver. Now in solver, Notice that I changed back these constraints to the correct original ones. I had changed the direction here to greater than or equal to before for illustration. So if you do that, make sure to change it back to less than or equal to. Anyway, we don't have to change the original model here in Solver. All we have to do is click on Solve. So you can see that something has changed. Before, the fuel additive here, the value was 25 and Solver values was 20 and before the total profit was 1600. So we're, we're making more of fuel additive and less of solvent base, but anyway, the overall effect is that the total profit has increased from 1600 to 1733, so it has increased by about $133.33. Here I will put down that the maximum profit will increase to $17.33.33 from $1,600. Now the question four, what will happen to the maximum profit if we have two times less material three than we thought? Two times less as opposed to three more in question three. Now it's actually a good practice to make a copy of the original sheet before you make the change so that you retain both the original result and the new result. Especially when you do your homework, I will ask you to show me both. So what we'll do is, okay, I'm going to change this back to the original number and solve it again to restore the original solution. Now, now what I would do is make a copy of this sheet to answer the new questions. Don't just copy and paste the cells, so that is, don't do this. Now, don't make a copy of this and paste it on a new sheet because then the solver settings, the stuff inside the solver, will not transfer. So you want to make a copy of the whole sheet. 
so I either right click on the sheet tab then copy then then, then I click on create a copy and maybe put the copy just before the next sheet say OK there it is this new sheet I'm going to do the work for question 4 and I put all the answers on the original sheet just to keep it organized so again what would happen to maximum profit if we have 2 tons less material 3 so material 3 is 21 tons and 2 tons less means 19 then I run solver again okay so here is a new solution and the new total profit so here I'm going to type the maximum will now decrease and which is what you would expect now you have less resource so lower profit now I'm back in the original sheet and let's get question 5 how about if we have two more tons of material 2 let's see material 2 we are using four tons out of five so there is still one ton left over so it seems there is still some excess amount of material 2 so will it help to get more probably not since we're not even using up all of the material 2 we have so getting more is not going to really make a difference so I would I would guess that profit will probably not change since material 2 is not really a scarce resource so getting more is not really going to help things but let's try it so make a copy of the sheet again here I'm on the new sheet and I'm going to change material 2's available number from 5 to 7 okay did anything change? nope still the same optimal solution and the same profit so getting more of the material 2 really was useless as we expected so again back to the original sheet and I'm going to write down the answer there was no change in the profit or the solution question 6 what if the unit profit of fuel additive is actually $30 rather than $40 would this change the optimal solution unit profit of fuel additive is over here in a 40 so what if the unit profit is decreased from 40 to 30 that, that would mean the fuel additive yields less profit than before so maybe uh, making a lot of fuel additive might not be as attractive as before but it also depends on the constraints so again I'm going to make a copy of it and make the change there here I'm going to change it to 30 and let's see what happens Oh, well no change making 25 tons 20 tons as before and of course the total profit is lower because each ton of fuel additive gives you now ten dollars less profit than before you know 30 as opposed to 40 so the total total profit will of course be changed but you're not doing anything different so the recommendation will not change in this case so back to the original sheet and uh, here we'll answer the question no change in the optimal solution the, the total profit decreases to 13.50 now the last questions okay so we saw that when the unit profit fuel additive goes down to 30 there was no change so we're asking what if it goes down even more to 22 so then the fuel additive will be less profitable than the solvent base then maybe the amount of fuel additive will decrease and the amount of solvent base might increase 
Again, it depends, so we should run solver to check. Again, make a copy of this. And I change this number to 22. And run solver. So what happened? Before it was 25 and 20. Now 25 went down to 18.75. And 20, the solvent base value, went up to 25. So this is kind of what we expected. But we had to check. So this gives us the 18.75 and 25 as the optimal solution values. And that's what we put down as the answer. And back to the original sheet here. The optimal solution will change to 18.75 tons of fuel additive and 25 tons of solvent base. As a bonus, let's put down the total prop as well, $1162.50. The total profit will change to $1,162.50. What we did here was after we solved the problem, we answered some questions based on the results. Some of them involved doing some sensitivity analysis on the results, like seeing how sensitive the solution is to changes in some of these parameters, like the right-hand side values and the objective coefficients.